No, thank you for, for your words and your presentation, and thanks for the invitation to come uh, to, to try to conclude such a very long day. Uh, as a lawyer, it's a pleasure to see uh, so many uh, competition lawyers in the room. Uh, as Commissioner for Justice, I have had uh, many conversations in the uh, DOG in Washington with the Attorney General to discuss about uh, the new agreement on data transfers, or the data privacy framework that we have concluded to discuss also about Ukraine, fortunately, uh, so to see how it's possible to bring perpetrators of crimes before justice, and to, to be sure that Russia will pay for the compensation for all the damage caused by the Russian aggression against Ukraine. But I was surprised, since September, it was not needed to go out of the building to discuss about competition. So in the same building, I've had a meeting with the assistant at the general, and so it's uh, very easy when we discuss on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean uh, on those issues. And I know that you have had, I said, a very busy day, but I think that um, it has also been an interesting day. I've just uh, followed the last minutes of the last panel uh, with uh, maybe many takeaways. I will do my best to keep it short at this time, and. Uh, to keep focus on impression received from the day's discussions. Uh, today's common thread is about how our work impacts crucial challenges. Whether you talk of sustainability, digitalization, cost of living issues, or the threats to our democracy, the fact is markets and market structure play a central role in shaping outcomes. We kicked off this morning with an issue that is at the heart of political debates across Europe, the cost of living crisis. Of course, after the um, Russian aggression against Ukraine, we have had certainly in Europe a real energy problem, and we uh, have discussed a lot about that uh, in the college, in the commission. But in this context, it's natural to explore the role competition policy plays in keeping prices low. An important observation is that the nature of price increases matters. Competitive markets can help contain inflation related to the exercise of market power, but for other causes, other tools are needed. Energy policy that I mentioned is an important recent example, and we have tried to work on the design of the energy market and to change some rules in relation with the functioning of the market in general. What's important is that these cost-driven impacts are not magnified by increasing concentration or anti-competitive behavior. So both merger control and antitrust enforcement can offer a dynamic set of solutions. I have seen that uh, since September, like you said, in many different sectors. I'm very impressed about the uh, real necessity for some actors to defend the concentration of uh, uh, power to um, have a better capacity to invest and to develop innovation. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe competition is also a good thing, but innovation and to promote investment. But uh, for the moment, we are very busy with some uh, uh, possible uh, uh, concentrations in the telecoms or with airlines companies, and all the time it's the same narrative. Why not to go to a better concentration, to have a better capacity uh, to invest and to uh, organize innovation? But we continue to do our job. And the same coordinate response is needed in digital regulation and the protection of privacy. To be fully effective, instruments like the Digital Markets Act must be fully complementary to other regulations, in particular those that concern data privacy, consumer protection, and content moderation. And by coincidence, I was already in charge for data protection and the full enforcement of the GDPR, but also in charge of uh, consumer policy. In Europe, we had different system. Uh, in some member states, it's uh, possible for one agency to be competent for consumer policy and for competition. In order, we have a separate uh, situation. In the commission, it was the same. We had two commissioners for consumer policy and competition. Now, uh, I have to manage uh, the two um, aspects of uh, such a kind of uh, approach. And um, I, I'm sure that it's very important to continue to, uh, to work on this, like on the, on the data protection. And one important theme we heard was transparency today. I'm sure that Olivier spoke about this earlier in the day. We want to, the, we want to be sure that the gatekeepers will be um, 
uh, open and clear in their path to meeting the compliance deadline. You know that for March it's important to have full compliance with the DMA. Input from third parties who operate in these markets will be key to achieving this goal. Another element that emerges from the discussion is that consumer choice is, a, is critical for tackling uh, tackling uh, these, these challenges. Consumers value privacy. I must confirm that I received many complaints from the uh, uh, our European Organization of Consumers, Berg, in relation with that. And uh, it's more and more a concern for consumers to uh, uh, see the, some violations, maybe of their privacy or some uh, uh, unlawful use of their data. They value trusted sources of information and they value choice. By providing more choice to consumers about how much of their data they want to share and with whom, we will make online markets a safer and more reliable place. And we will make these markets also more contestable. We also had a conversation about the nature of the uh, economic approach we take to uh, assessing cases, notably when it comes to exclusionary abuses. In a dynamic world, markets evolved and so did the, the Commission's enforcement priorities. We have gained ample experience in enforcing Article 102 in a broad variety of sectors, and the Union courts have had an important role in shaping this uh, enforcement. They have com confirmed an effects-based approach to Article 102. We are now at a point where we can take stock of these developments. And um, we are working towards adopting guidelines on our approach to Article 102. As always, there will be ample opportunities for everyone to provide their input to this work stream in a public consultation that we are planning to launch next year. This discussion, so all, uh, this discussion all came together in the final, which was our discussion on mergers, and I've listened to part of it. It is here that the frontier is most clearly seen, because the developments in merger control are bringing all of the issues together. Theories of harm tailored to market realities of today's economy and supported by sound economic assessment. The competitive dynamics between different services within digital ecosystems make this analysis more complex. To respond, we are adapting our approach again, the new reporting requirements of the DMA, as well as our new approach to referrals under Article 22, will increase our capacity to target scrutiny of digital acquisitions to the cases that, that matter most. And um, I want to say that I've seen from the beginning of uh, this approach about uh, competition that we have new evolution due to the digital transition. And certainly, the place of the data in all the discussion that we have about competition is more and more important. And we need to take care of that. I said that it's also a priority for the consumers. And it's a question of trust at the end. A trust to have a good functioning of the market, and certainly in Europe, the single market. To sum up, competition policy is in motion. It is moving because the markets that demand our attention are being shaped by the great trends of our time. Digital transition, a new era for global markets, and historic geopolitical shifts. Um, if we are to protect the uh, contestability of markets at the center of these changes, we are obliged to adapt. Today, we have touched upon some of the most important themes at play in that uh, adaptation. I won't be uh, the last, uh, it won't be the, the last discussion we have on these issues, but from what I have heard, I'm sure we are on the right track for the next years. For sure we can say we are keeping competition policy on the frontier. And so I will be pleased to see also some uh, solutions for different cases that I have uh, 
uh, heard in the last panel, but be sure that I'm open to come back for the conference 2028, because it seems to be the next one, <laughs> if I'm well uh, informed uh, in listening to the last panel, but I will be very pleased to come back at that moment to see if it's possible till there to have some uh, decisions in justice. As Commissioner for Justice, I will try to do my best to accelerate some processes. We have a justice core board every year in Europe since more than 10 years, and the goal is to uh, try to improve the efficiency. So maybe in 27, you will have a decision. Thank you. All right, so this brings the conference to a close. It has been a, a long day, a very exciting day, so I'd just like to thank everyone uh, for, for, for making this such a successful event. So, of course, first the, the, the speakers provided great, great insights. Uh, the audience, we had one of our record attendants, uh, so that's, that's very, very, very much appreciated, especially uh, makes it, it makes us forget a bit about COVID, so that's, that's really very good. And, uh, and, and finally, the, uh, the CRA team that uh, helped put this uh, uh, together. That was a great, great team effort. So thank you, everyone. And now there should be some drinks.